Hey guys, welcome to another daydream. Thanks again for subscribing. Thank you for liking the videos and putting your valuable watch time into them. So in today's video, because the car's been racing quite a little bit, it's been driven quite hard recently. Uh, I've done the oil change, but I just want to do an oil test. Now, what is an oil test? So this is a kit here that's available in the UK. It's uh, fulfilled by Miller Oils. It's the Vision Oil Analysis for Passenger Cars. So mine is a passenger car. It's a road legal passenger car. Okay, so this kit costs, I think it's about 35 pounds. And then what, I'll show you what's inside there, but if you're in the US, there's a company called Blackstone and they do an analysis which costs 30 bucks. Worthwhile if you've been, you know, if you're a little bit concerned, if you drop the oil and something isn't quite right, but I'm just being extra cautious. I just want to make sure everything's good because obviously the car's been never been driven that hard before. So what do you get in this kit? Let's have a look. So we open it and we get some instructions. They want you to complete a form, remove the label from the form and stick it to the sample bottle. Take the sample, fill the bottle. So it's 80 milliliters required for the, to run the full analysis and place the sample bottle inside a postal tube and place in a prepaid envelope. So that's all the instructions there. This is the form. So what does the form want? So your first name, last name, address, phone number, email, reason for having the oil analysis completed use of vehicle um, so reason being recently raced use of vehicle typically short journeys for me and um, because i only take it out for a drive about the oil type of oil so i'll tell them that it's the engine oil right oil manufacturer product name viscosity so i'll tell them what that is mileage on the oil which i have because i do my oil changes myself manufacturer drain interval i'm not quite sure i think ford say uh, 5,000 miles or a year, whichever one comes first. Vehicle registration, make, model, model variant, year, mileage on the vehicle, after treatment. So this is any additives that you might add. Is the vehicle modified? If so, what modifications have been made? So 10 PSI boost with a supercharger. Are there any concerns with the vehicle engine? No. So has the vehicle had its oil sample before? If so, provide reference number. The answer is no. Any additional information? not really um, and then you fill this in this is the prepaid envelope so you just drop it in a box and this is the oil oh. that's it so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna send it off and I think they send you a report via email so let's get to it so I've got my old oil, I didn't throw it away. I'm just gonna fill this up. Well, I kept the old oil because it's going to go get recycled. So that's our sample. I'm going to shut this up real tight. So fill this up. Brilliant. So this is nice and tight. What I'm gonna do is maybe actually this should be fine. It shouldn't come loose. Drop it in here. Postal tube. Return to Miller. 
Oh, it will. So this is that. Shove that in here. I'm gonna fill the rest of it in and I'll get back to you guys when the results come in. Peace out. Oh, gosh darn it. With the oil everywhere. And that's it. Drop this off at the post office because it won't fit through the post box. And that's it, really. That's that done. And I think it takes about a week for the results to get back. So, yeah, see you guys then. So, guys, my oil sample results are back. So, the testing I did uh, is basically I got an online email from Miller's Oil, as you can see no information and I sent the oil off on the I think the sample date was something but basically it took about two working days for them to get <coughs> get back to me um, about three working days from the point I posted but that's on me um, I took a while to get the sample out and the results are very good actually um, in the email that the laboratory manager sent me Mike Wynn um, he said he literally had nothing much to say I'll put it here um, and uh, you know and that's a good thing and in terms of the report which I'm looking at on my phone uh, I'll put it in the video just there and so you can see it it basically says that I have one parts per million of chrome which is CR uh, zero parts per million of PB which is lead so I don't have any of that uh, zero parts per million of nickel and um, <clears throat> one part per million of SN and that's tin. Uh, 330 parts per million of boron, which is B. Uh, I know why that is, so I'll get back to that in a moment. Uh, 19 parts per million of iron. Again, very low. Um, 211 parts per million of molybdenum, whatever, how did I pronounce it right? I don't know. Um, 17 parts per million of silicon. Uh, zero parts per million of vanadium. I think that's only for diesel fuel, so this is not diesel. Um, 8 parts per million of aluminium, 2 parts per million of copper, and 7 parts per million of uh, sodium, which is Na. Um, so why do I have such a large number of boron um, and molybdenum? I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, and that's mainly because of this. It's Ceratec. It's a high-tech ceramic wear protection for engine and manual transmission additive. Um, yeah, I think you use a bottle every five years. I've been using this for a while now just to have some added protection on the engine because if you own a Mustang, you know they can suffer from a tick after the first oil change. Um, so I just put it in there as a caution. It will not do any harm. I want my car to last me for the rest of my life. Oil is cheap, additives are cheap, crate motors aren't. So, you know, I want to extend the life of that as much as I can. So that's the reason for the high uh, uh, high boron and molybdenum readings because that's what this is made of so that was to be expected um, so w w what do the other things mean so if you have so on the on the on the actual report you get this as well so I'll show it on there there you go you get a source of metals um, in terms of where they come from so the highest one which is only 19 parts per million um, is iron and they said that iron is found in cylinder liners rings gears crankshaft camshaft, uh, valve train, oil pump gear, you know, and Gajian pins. I don't know what Gajian pins are. If you know, comment below, help me out. Um, and, and that's it really. So um, I was expecting it to be a bit higher in the in the in, in these sort of things because obviously Carbow beat on the car a lot. And, you know, and I'm actually pleasantly shocked uh, and how low the readings are um, and I think that's all due to the fact that I do uh, yearly oil changes 
um, and my car typically drives less than 5,000 miles a year. And the oil that I've been using in the past, if you haven't seen my previous video, is the Shell Helix Ultra um, 5W30 AF. Uh, a very, very, very good oil. Um, I, I don't recommend anybody should use anything else in their Mustang if it's not supercharged. Um, why do I say that? Because that's what I use. Uh, in America, I think it's known as uh, Pennzoil uh, Ultra Platinum, I think, 5W30 weight. Um, uh, and again, it's just, just superb oil, fully synthetic, made for, I think it's base oil is made for, from uh, liquefied natural gas. Um, because it has that ultra pure technology or whatever but it's yeah I, I highly highly recommend it um, but yeah I've switched to a 5w50 uh, Miller's oil um, it has the right um, 4wss m2c 931-c classification for it to work in the Mustang in terms of its flow characteristics so that's because I'm blown and I will not be using the car in the winter anyway um, so that's the test um, would I get it done? So the, the, the oil life um, on, in this case was, so I ran that oil for 2,700 miles and it basically says that the oil condition is still good. So even if I didn't change that oil, it, it would have been absolutely fine. But um, the way I see it, a year is enough or uh, you should change it after if the car has been driven heavily. And to be honest, this is the first time the car was driven really heavily. So I just really wanted to get, the, wanted to get, this, uh, get this report done. It adds to the history of the car that the, you know even after this event people can say oh you know that's when you might have ruined something blah 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 evidently not because if something was ruined there'd be a lot of other stuff in there so that's the sample kit so if you want to get it done uh, it's Miller's oil uh, do I think it's worth it I don't think it's worth doing every single oil change uh, 30 pounds or 35 or 40 pounds whatever it was um, is, is a lot of money um, uh, but I think you should do it every other oil change. So once every two years, just to make sure everything's okay. Or if you've had a particularly hard um, track session and uh, you've only recently changed your oil, um, you could just loosen the sump plug, um, take a bit of the sample out um, and, and get it sent for testing and tighten it up and uh, see if you actually need to change the oil. Um, it's not a one or the other sort of thing because this does give you a lot of useful information. So it's not like, oh no, it came back fine. I wasted my money. It's, that's not the case. It gives you a lot of confidence in A, the motor oil you're running, your maintenance regimes, and uh, anybody else who might wish to buy your car in the future, you can add this to the history. It shows that you really care. I know I would really like to see those reports. Um, so this is why I would highly uh, recommend it. Hope you find that useful. I'm still working on a video which answers all of the questions that people have been saying to me on on the various forums, whether it's uh, you know Mustang 6G, um, whether it's my friends who have been asking me questions on WhatsApp or Instagram about my day out at Car Wow. So I'll do that. It's a work in progress, and I'll sort of combine that with a walk around the car so you guys actually get to see um, what this is about. So what the car is about, what I've done to it, what my plans are for it. Um, I've just bought, I've just, I've just been given a, a short block, uh, a Coyote V8 short block, which I'm planning to sleeve, put forged pistons in, etc. And uh, but that's a long project. It's, it's expensive, um, and I don't do this as anything more than a hobby, and to help you guys out. So please like, please subscribe keeps me motivated thank you to everybody who's followed me thank you to everybody who's subscribed thank you for everybody who's sticking around um, I, I, I do appreciate that till next time